Now we're going to hear from our panel of witnesses who will share uh, with us uh, their perspectives on the Corps' uh, ecosystem restoration uh, project. And we're going to uh, start off with uh, Eric uh, Eichenberg. Let me just make uh, some brief comments about, uh, about uh, Eric. Chief uh, Executive Office of the Everglades Foundation, environmental nonprofit that's focused on restoring America's Everglades. He has served in his role for over 10 years, leading a team of nationally recognized scientists, educators, policy experts, and communications and development professionals. Mr. Eichenberg and the team are committed to protecting the roughly 3 million acres of endangered habitat that is vital to uh, Florida's economic and environmental viability. Uh, Mr. Eichenberg, we thank you for uh, being with us today and you may uh, proceed uh, with your statement. It'll be made uh, uh, part of the record in its entirety. Thank you so much. Please proceed and welcome. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Carper, uh, Ranking Member Capito, uh, and to the committee. Uh, my name, as the Chairman mentioned, is Eric Eichenberg, and I'm privileged to be CEO of the Everglades Foundation, uh, celebrating its 30th anniversary and help helping to restore America's Everglades through science, advocacy, and education. I want to thank the committee for this hearing and for inviting me here today. Restoring America's Everglades is producing benefits far beyond their ecological value including driving Florida's clean water economy, protecting drinking water supplies, providing flood risk mitigation, and carbon sequestration. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been an indispensable partner in this undertaking, together with the state of Florida. Thanks to recent federal and state investments, we are at a point of incredible progress and momentum. Following congressional passage of WERDA 2000, Everglades Restoration incorporates 68 uh, separate public work pro projects that will store, clean, and send water south on the Florida Peninsula. It is a national example of how traditional and natural infrastructure can be combined on a massive scale. Under the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, or SERP, these projects were funded with a 50-50 federal state cost share. We thank Congress for their recent investments, including the funding to the Army Corps within the bipartisan infrastructure law, and for your recognition of the importance of America's Everglades. The Army Corps has completed several non-SERP projects, like the Herbert Hoover Dyke Repair, and in partnership with the state of Florida, restoration of the Kissimmee River, and the construction of bridges along the Tamiami Trail. In recent years, the pace of SERP projects is unprecedented. For example, east of Lake Okeechobee in Martin County, construction of the C-44 reservoir is complete. East of Naples, a 55,000-acre habitat restoration project in the Picayune Strand is nearly finished. South of Lake Okeechobee, the Corps recently broke ground on the crown jewel of Everglades restoration the EAA Reservoir. This reservoir is a national priority and a model for prudent and efficient way to fund mega projects with taxpayer dollars. These and other projects confirm that restoration works and I cannot overstate the importance of these results. With improved southerly flow, we are already seeing habitats reestablished in areas of Everglades National Park that just five years ago were parched by drought for half the year. As you may know, Florida's coastal estuaries have been plagued by toxic blue-green algae that closes beaches, restricts fishing, and is a harmful threat to wildlife and people. The algae blooms are fed by the unavoidable dumping of polluted water from Lake Okeechobee. The fortified Herbert Hoover Dyke and the EAA Reservoir will reduce those harmful discharges by 55%, having a profound positive impact on Florida's tourism-based economy. Storing, cleaning, and sending this clean water south is essential to Florida Bay. Its gin-clear waters and lush seagrass meadows makes Florida Bay the fishing capital of the world, a body of water alive with manatees, dolphins, and a wide variety of coveted game fish. Today, however, the bay is suffering from too little 
fresh water. A restored Everglades will also provide a natural defense against saltwater intrusion due to sea level rise. Flowing more water south will protect our nation's largest mangrove forest. Restoration will also protect existing peat soils in the Everglades that enhance the sequestration of new carbon. We're at a critical juncture. With sustained federal and state investments, this can be the Everglades decade in which we achieve the dream of robust, healthy river of grass following a century of development. The stakes are high both for the 9 million people who rely on the Everglades for fresh water and for the nation as a whole. Florida's tourism-based economy depends on clean water, and our economic research shows that Everglades restoration yields a four-to-one investment. Senators, you should be proud of the bipartisan progress in restoring America's Everglades. On behalf of the anglers, the realtors, the fishing guides, the business owners, and the millions who depend on the Everglades, let me say thank you, and please do not stop now. All right. Thank you, and, and we won't.